Dude, those are dope. And we're live. What's up, everyone? Uh, I'm here with Eli Wild. Uh, if you don't know him, um, he is Tony Robbins' number one salesperson. He's sold over nine figures in contracts uh, and just an absolute sales beast. If you need some help on mindset, on sales, he is the guy that you go to. Um, and one of my really good buddies in uh, Miami, Florida. So, Eli, thank you for being here, dude. What's up, buddy? So nice to see your face and to connect um, and connect with your community that I've been connected to for a while. And so impressed with your growth in every way, man. Thank you, dude. And you, I've interviewed you before in the Facebook group, if I'm not mistaken. Or is this our first time? Oh, man. You know, I think we, when I stayed at your place, I think that we were talking about it. We didn't do it then. Um, I don't know. I think I it, something. I feel like we did something. I'm not sure what it was. If we didn't, at least we get to interview you now with your beautiful new apartment and new mic and new camera because it's looking really good. All the things. I love it. Um, guys, if you have any questions along the way, this is a conversation. So hop in, ask questions for Eli. Uh, but I just want to jump into it right off the bat and talk about sales. Awesome. So what is your sales philosophy? You know, it's it's interesting. I, obviously, as you said, I you know worked with Tony Robbins for a long time. And, you know, I think to be in sales, and Jordan Belford talks about this too, you need to have this sense of like, like drive. And, you know, a lot of these people that do get into sales, most of them work 100% commission. So you got to have that drive. And I had that initially and I was very good. And a lot of people bought. And if you ask anybody in the company who the best speaker, communicator, salesperson was, everybody said me. And I did well. And I found when I really got into it, because I definitely didn't get everybody. And I got a large percentage of people and people were impressed by me. I could communicate. I could do all the things. But also my background was acting. And so I was an actor, I was a performer. And the people that bought from me, as you know, in rapport, people like people who are like themselves or how they want to be. And so young guys, young girls, people that are articulate, that are well-spoken, that were driven, I got those people. But they were, you know, 80-year-old grandmoms and these people and, you know, people that were very different could never connect with those people and would critique me and rip me apart. And I got to learn his philosophy on sales and what he was doing and what he was doing within the realm of communication to really adjust, have this sensory acuity, acute sensitivity to what's actually happening, not being connected to a script or you trying to sell something, your own agenda, but really having this target that was related to connecting with a human being and digging in and, and then having the behavioral flexibility to change the moment's notice based on the feedback that you're getting. And I think my philosophy, of course, I've been so influenced by Tony, really comes down to being in the moment, being present, listening to what's unsaid, and can be connecting deeper than just the surface level emotion and conversation, and giving a lot of feedback, feeding into postures. And it's really kind of a, a scientific approach based in NLP, um, but then relates to behavior. And even, you know, with the critiques that Tony had on me, and, you know, he'll send me audio messages still, things he likes, things that he doesn't like. And, you know, and he's very warm, he's very sweet, but he's very direct. It's really kind of shaped my philosophy over the years as to what this actually is, this thing called sales. It's influencing people. And the difference between influence and, and manipulation is intent. And so one of the things that I really work on even now before talking to you or when I get up in the morning when I go to bed is to making sure that I'm aligned with actually serving people service-based leadership, you know, being that servant leader, especially if you're selling people judge you fucking salesperson, whatever it is, but to see past all that and to derive a empowered meaning from it in the moment, easier said than done, especially when you're dealing with challenges or life or people or relationships or nasty people, all that stuff to, to rise above. And when I would do these presentations, oftentimes I might go to, you know, a car lot or, you know, a place where people are just jerks sometimes. And, mm -hmm. You know, with marketing now, we get to segment and attract our tribe and all these things and like-minded people and create community. And it's beautiful. But Tony said this. He's like, if you really want to be good, you need to go into the worst environments. Because at first I was, well, mm -hmm. you know, screw those people. I'm just not going to go there. Something that might be angry or mean to you. And I was like, well, screw those people. But I was like, 
actually those people actually need it the most. Mm. And so all communication is a cry for help, you know, is a loving response or a cry for help. And so anything that is from the market that's not a loving response is a cry for help in some way, but also those people that are screaming the loudest have the most pain that are associated from past experiences, past references, and they're projecting that onto you. And so how do we not take offense? How do we rise above? How do we ask the right questions and show up in a way that ultimately connects with all human beings based on understanding what really drives them? Why do people do what they do? And so once we can bypass that and connect and ask the right questions in the right way, of course, all of that, um, there's been a lot of talk around that and, and it's really powerful, it's helped me, but more than anything, it's, it's really in human psychology and within myself, of course, I wanted to be the top salesperson. I wanted to you know, make money and all that. But, you know, I had a mission on my heart, like where I went to Tony Robbins event. I, I was sold into it. I bet on myself. I did it. It had a big impact on me. And so when I went out there every day, I was associated to, you know what, this can change somebody's life. And my mission became not to become the best person, because it's all about me, but was to change the world by exposing people to this man. Mm. And I believe if you're selling right now, or you're, you know, like Andrew, if you're, if you're, if you're the man, or you're the salesman for the man, or whatever it is, um, I believe that every single day we need to associate ourselves to that mission that we want to change the world through what we have. So that requires you to believe in yourself and also believe in your product, and show up in a way where you're communicating. Well, you're not trying to make a sale. You're seeing if there's a sale to be made. You're thinking, how do I help this person? And if there's an alignment, then you have a moral responsibility to enroll this person for their reasons. And if they feel that the intention is pure, you'll be able to pull them into your force field and, and lock eyes with them and you'll get into those vulnerable, juicy moments. And uh, that's where magic happens. Oh my God. There's so much to unpack there. And uh <laughs> The coolest thing yeah. is like you have the best one-liners. So if you guys watching, pull out one liner, a uh, one-liner from Eli, put it in the comments so we can all save it. Like the difference between um, uh, between manipulation and influence is intent. Yeah, I thought that was super duper powerful. And, yeah. and so that um, like, and so the process, and not to, to interject, well, to just yeah. to interject. So yeah. not to interrupt, but that's what I'm doing. Yes. Uh, you know, Tony learned, and I, I mentioned the word NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, you know, and Tony created his own philosophy around that and changed some things because he says you can't program somebody like we're not computers, but just like going to the gym, we can condition ourselves. Neuro Associative Conditioning, he called it NAC. And so every single day, whether it's your morning routine or how you go to the gym or shower, hopefully, or whatever it is, brushing our teeth, it's conditioning ourselves. And just like there's bacteria that grows on teeth or funky stuff from the gym, we need to cleanse and recondition and condition ourselves every day. And when two people meet, the person that is more certain will influence the other person. So it's about conditioning your certainty in yourself. And I don't take it for granted. And so when I wake up and I know that if I'm going to be in front of a lot of people, I'm going to have the most certainty in the room. Mm. And people, they might be really certain about what they can't do. And so I've got more references in my nervous system now. And I have some spiritual beliefs that are around as well, the chakras, the energy and all that. Um, like when I did the event with Jordan Belfort two years ago, there was over a thousand people there and I outsold him by the way, but all the people were like, were you, were you, uh, scared? I was like scared. I was like, if anybody's going to be scared, it's going to be them. I'm the only person here that knows what's going to happen. I'm the only person here that knows what's going to, what's going to be said. And so also that requires a intense level of preparation and commitment to daily practice and conditioning of my mind and emotions and also the skills of communication and looking at my own process and getting feedback to always have the mindset of that, you know, Kaizen, that constant never ending improvement. And so I know that's where a large part of my confidence and certainty comes from, not because I'm better than nope next to somebody else it's going to be very very different on a stage or when i'm connecting to somebody and again going back to what i said initially people like people who are like themselves or how they want to be and while we might not be alike people can at least say i want to be more confident i want to be more committed i want to be more purposeful in my communication and my cause and i want to live a life of sense of meaning and they'll see that gap and one of the analogies I always make in my trainings is there's like the earth 
and the moon, if the earth gets bigger, the moon will get closer. It's, it's like physics. But if the earth were to shrink, the moon would get, would pull away. It's, it's the gravitational pull because of the mass. And so I see myself like the earth and this person like the moon drawn in. But if, you know, in communication, say the salesperson makes an offer, Hey, do you want to buy it's 5k? And then the person says, I got to think about it. Well, that emotion, that energy in motion, that stimulus response will affect the nervous system of the salesperson and they'll mm -hmm. shrink and they might say the word right objection handler. They might communicate the right way, but they mm -hmm. say the words, not just linguistically a little bit off, but they say it with frustration, fear, anger in their voice. And then the prospect responds, not back to the words, but they respond back to the emotion, the energy in motion. And then you have this back and forth. And so there's an energy that we need to clear within ourselves and within our intention and to show up and hold the space like they talk about in coaching. And when that happens, that's where you get to play with these juicy and those juicy moments. But I'm no, nobody's perfect with it. Tony Robbins or anybody, we all do have egos. And sometimes we need to observe that. And, you know, when people are saying this and all of that, so it's, it's something that we need to do con consistently. That's the conditioning. So good. So to be a top 1% salesperson, you've got to be able to influence. And influence comes through certainty. Uh, so what are different ways, and you brought up a few, but what are the other different ways that you can increase certainty in yourself, in what you're selling, in everything else, so that you can be more influential? What are, what are kind of the tactics or strategies that you use to increase certainty so you can be more influential? So there's like a formula, your results and your health, your business, your life relationships, like everything that you have today, money in your bank account, fat on your body or whatever it is, everything you have is as a result. And results come from actions or lack of action or the wrong action or the right action. So some kind of action, but what precedes all action are decisions decisions about what to do what the thing, what things mean, what I'm going to focus on. A lot of the decisions that we make are unconscious. And so what creates our decisions are our thoughts and feelings. And so I know when I'm going to make a sale, I, I could just say, Hey, buy the thing, take action. Eh, hey, make a decision, but that's not going to get the result I want. So I gotta be more tactful. And I say, Hey, I think to myself, like if they're thinking this and they're feeling that, then they're going to take the action. So actions are always preceded by thoughts and feelings. So I'm really clear in part of what I teach is how do I shape, reframe, change focus around people's thoughts and feelings that put them in what we call the buying state. But as it relates to thoughts and feelings, the ones you have now today, the ones you're, you know, if you're watching this, 99% of like your thoughts and feelings today, same as yesterday. So there's a pattern. And so what precedes all thoughts and feelings are beliefs and a belief of, you know, you have situation specific beliefs. Oh, you know, on Fridays I do this or on the weekend, I do that, or in this kind of relationship or when I'm doing this, or you have global beliefs, people are life is you have beliefs about yourself. I am, those are the most powerful, but what you believe. And by the way, a definition of a belief is a feeling of certainty. So we need to understand what this thing certainty is. It's really a belief. You know, it's like when somebody says, I believe something, they're saying, I feel certain. And so like I've asked you like, Hey, Andrew, what's your name? What would you Andrew. Say? Andrew, scale of one to 10. How certain are you? 10. Like what are the chances you're going to wake up tomorrow and your name be Susie? You just wake up and your name's Susie. That'd be weird as fuck. It'd be weird as fuck. Yeah. And feel really weird. Yeah. Cause it goes against my belief. And so part of the reason that you're that certain is it has a lot to do with conditioning. People have said it to you since day one. So all of your references, and by the way, our beliefs come from our, our references, which are real or imagined, but I could start asking you questions to take away your certainty in anything. So um, mm. how do you know your name's Andrew? Like who told you that? Or did, did you just kind of give it to yourself? Ask yeah, my, my parents gave it to me. It's on okay. my birth certificate. Okay. And, uh, everybody's been parents, calm. Yeah. and I don't mean to be offensive. I'm sure your parents are great, but have, have your parents ever said something to you that wasn't hundred percent true, even because they, they care about you. Did they ever say anything to you that wasn't hundred percent true? They, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they've lied to me in the past to okay. protect me. Okay. And so I'm not saying 
that they're lying about that. But you're saying that is is it just been one time they were just a little bit dishonest, or has it been more than once? There, uh, uh, yeah, there have been multiple times. So, so, here's, so here's the is thing: my, is you, my name Andrew? I don't know if my name's Andrew anymore. But if we have enough of a conversation around, could be buying somebody's program, could be I'm not pretty. Whatever you're coaching somebody through their thoughts and feelings, we can. So if somebody has a belief like I'm, like I could have a belief that says. Belief. We think of it like a belief, like a tabletop without with legs, you know, without legs. But if I have a belief that says I'm stupid, I can think of all my times in my life where I've done something really dumb and I can support like like legs under a table, support the belief that I'm stupid. Or I have a belief that says I'm fucking awesome and I'm super smart. And I can think of all the times. So there's references that support the belief. Mm -hmm. Now, these experiences or references that support the belief in your name or the fact that you could be successful, what supports that? Are these references that are real or imagined? And most people make up shit. Well, I'm not pretty. How do you know? It's like, so, so sometimes, well, they said that, but could that have been them dealing with their own thing? And most of these belief systems about ourselves, what we're capable of, were formed at a young age. And so part of the process of CBT, NLP, all that stuff is really getting people to like those legs underneath the table to chop them down and make the references weaker to support a new belief system. And that's where change begins to happen. And so we can do that very quickly in a, in a seminar, like a three-day thing. Like when I'm, I'm doing some of these events, I'll create some of that context to create, help people create new identities based on how they see themselves. So to go back to your question, a belief is a feeling of certainty. And what creates more certainty are more references that can be real or imagined. Mm. And so that mental like visualization of yourself or actually physically doing something like feeling confident in your body moving like you're confident acting as if but it's got to be a bottom up phenomenon because there's a lot of work out there that talks about mindset and i'm huge mindset 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 and people associate tony robbins with mindset 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 and he is and he's not what was really beautiful about tony's work is uh, now they call it more like um bioenergetics um, all the things, but you see people jumping up and down and we live in a very like heady society. We, we consume things here, but he's like, people got to fucking move. You know, it's like you, you wake up, you drive in a box to a box office and you, you consume maybe a cylinder, you have a box cigarette, a box lunch, whatever it is. Like we're kind of boxed in and to get outside the box requires movement. And he was really good at getting people to jump up and down, make their power move because a big part of how you feel, whether it's confident or certain or in love or anything relates to the feelings that come from our body. And some people have trauma. Some people have things that we need to work through. And that can be breath work. I know you love and, and all these aspects of really the deeper layers, layers of the subconscious and energy healing. And I believe that with mindset and communication, that's kind of the process of, of NLP and even hypnosis is to get people to access certain states, mm -hmm. states of mind, states of body, because one thing that accesses your state, there's a pattern of mental focus there's a pattern of language and meaning, but there's a pattern in your physiology. And so if somebody sits all day like this, you know, and, and smokes crack, there's a different, there's a physiological biochemical change in your nervous system that makes you tense. And just like animals can smell fear, fear and tension are the same. And so that's why I said like the earth and the moon, when somebody gives you an objection, if you tense up and say, well, have you thought about this? They respond back to the energy as opposed to, you know what? Not a problem. I hear you. I really appreciate that. And can I ask, what, what was it that got you to even consider doing this in the first place? Empathy, caring, concern. And when it's not just rehearsing the language, but going into it, and you know that your intention is pure and you're there for that person, I believe part of the certainty that really drives the most confident people in the world um, that have performed at legendary levels. And I teach there's four levels of influence to get to that legendary level. You can access some energy. The most successful people in the world that have ever lived, they often say something like this, usually towards the end of their life, I thank God or the universe for the message that used me, meaning they got into alignment. And just like their spinal cord, like an antenna, something came through them and they're like, that wasn't even me almost like they're channeling something because, and even in Thinking Grow Rich, all these books, they talk about infinite intelligence and when we're aligned 
and our beliefs are conditioned, you know, we connect to the infinite and things come through us. And really to have that level of certainty, another word for certainty in the unseen, trust in the unseen is faith. Mm. And have faith in the moment. And I remember Tony and a couple other mentors telling me this. They were like, Eli, when you get it, when it happens for you, there'll be nobody that you can't touch. Because they were like, they told me like it's in you, but you doubt yourself. And to have faith in the unseen, because when you see like Tony Robbins doing an intervention or say you're selling somebody and you don't know what the fuck's going to happen, but that's part of the fun of it. Trust your unconscious. Trust that the right thing's going to come through you. And even when shit's hitting the fan, you find some certainty and that's leadership. Leadership is being certain in times of uncertainty. And sometimes you're dealing with the certainty of your spouse or your business or your client or whatever. And to show up in that state of certainty, even when you have no references, everything around you is saying this fucking sucks and it's not going to work out, but you've got this trust in the moment. People are drawn towards those people because they're leaders and they exude a feeling because why does anybody do what they do? They're looking for an emotion. They're looking for a feeling. Some people would argue with that, but if, if I talk to them long enough, there's no way that you can. All behavior is driven by an emotion, boredom, frustration, fear, or even just, you know, whatever. There's, there's an emotion that drives all behavior. And so the best way that we can get people into that emotion is to use some of the things that I teach and to transfer it, to be it. And then we give people a, a living possibility, a demonstration of what that's like to be that caring, concerned, empathetic, clear, driven, certain, and people really dig it. So good, dude. So um, I wanna take it back to a uh, little bit more towards sales. This yeah, is yeah. so good, so juicy. Um, we were talking about increasing certainty so we can influence. We talked about um, uh, changing our beliefs or strengthening our beliefs that serve us, where it doesn't just come from our head or what we're saying or just the mantras, but we also have to embody it in our body with bioenergetics and all of that stuff to really install that belief within ourselves. So that's how we get to the root of it, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say we're in a sales conversation, we get an objection, and just like you had the metaphor analogy of the earth and the moon, that pull away, when we get an objection, how do we mitigate that feeling within us in the moment where we're like, oh shit, I just got an objection. What kind of goes through your head or goes through how you process an objection now compared to, let's say, when you were just starting out? Yeah. How yeah, how do we not get influenced by uh, the person that is on that enrollment call in, in that moment? Because it's a visceral reaction when we get an objection if we don't have that really strong belief within ourselves. Yeah, so there's so all the emotions, certainty, whatever is based upon what we call a triad. Triad is an emotional state. And just like any emotion, whether it's fear, somebody's yelling at you, you're angry, whatever, we can pull it apart like a recipe. Just like chocolate cake, there's some flour, some eggs, some chocolate, you know, some, some ingredients to the thing. And so to access a higher state of awareness, of consciousness, of certainty, whatever it is, we need to pull apart the ingredients. And so one, there's focus. So your mind might go to, well, you know, they said this, not going to work out, not going to pay my rent. There's a pattern of focus. And another word for a pattern is a habit, a pattern of language and meaning language yours or theirs, and you make it mean something. Make it mean something bad about them. I fucking wasted all this time. You know, it means this person sucks, means that, you know, they don't have money, means means something that, you know, is about me, I'm not good. And there's a pattern in physiology. So that's the shrinking, the physiology is, is you. But all these things produce a state. And when you feel ecstasy, there's something you're focused on. There's a pattern of meaning in the moment. Um, there's a pattern of even language that you say and the way that you say it, and there's a, there's a freedom. And so inside of the sales conversation, so one, let's take it you know, into the sales con conversation specifically. We talked about conditioning. To be really strong in anything, there's a certain amount of conditioning. So one part of that triad in the moment that we need to condition is of course the language. We, have, we do have to know what to say. And I remember certain times, and that's, one, that's like one fourth of it. You got, you got to know what to say though. The language is important. But in NLP, they prove that it's 7% of communication. Even on the phone, the words are super important, but two people can say the same word. 
not get the same result, read the same script, different result. And so there's a lot happening within the nervous system inside the unconscious. And so you do though need to have the words. And so I remember so many times behind stage, Tony Robbins, thousands of people out there and shit, shit would hit the fan, something bad would happen. And if you ran it by Tony, despite what's happening, he had conditioned himself and he had certain responses, conditioned responses to alleviate the reaction. Cause we're all animals in some way. We've all got that part of ourselves, stimulus response. For most people, it's stimulus reaction. And what separates us from animals is that we get to choose how we want to respond. But most people are not in the moment enough to recognize. And so sometimes a linguistic anchor can change that. And so shit hits the fan. Somebody says something to Tony, he'd say, well, here's what's great. Well, here's what's great about that. And so it forced him to focus his mind on what was great. And so in the about next, in the next point seven seconds, as he says, well, here's what's great. It forces his mind to come up with something that's great. Or you know what? Not a problem. Okay. I can understand that that could be an issue for you. And then it gives me somewhere to go. So stimulus, fuck you, Eli. I think your problem is your, your program is the biggest piece of shit in the world. Uh, not a problem. I think that's really amazing that you've been so candid with me. And if I could ask you a question, so now I'm going to re redirect their focus. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the triad on myself first level one influence is how I influence myself level two influence, how I influence one to one level three influence one to many level four, when you're not even there, like Tony now I'm using some of his concepts, Jesus, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Steve jobs, we're using the work that was influenced. So that's level four. And what I begin to do then is to reframe their focus. Well, you know, let me ask you a question. What if you looked at it this way? What if it wasn't what you thought it was? You know, well, I'm sure your intention, well, I don't have money. Well, I'm sure your intention is to do the best thing with your fa for your family. Is that right? So now it's not about money. It's about doing the best thing for their family. Hmm. So I'm starting to use some NLP and reframing patterns. There's 14 of them around the belief that they have and I'll uncover it. I'll reframe it. I'll get them to focus on it differently and feel different about taking action, buying, staying the same, pain, pleasure, all of it. And you know, there's, there's a lot to that obviously, but that's what's happening. And so as it relates to you specifically, when somebody does object what they're saying, and I believe that all objections are limiting beliefs, limiting buying beliefs. There's something they don't, they don't believe they can find the money. They don't believe that it's worth it. You know, there's something that they believe because if they really believed a thousand percent, this thing would change their life. They believed in the program, then they would do it. If they believe that they didn't need to talk to their spouse, they believe that their spouse is supportive. So there's some belief that's creating the thoughts and feelings and decisions and actions and their lack of results. And they've had a consistent pattern in what they're doing, asking their spouse. So it was like, how's that been working out for you? If I could ask. Okay. So there's a pattern that's got you exactly where you are. And so we're here talking about new strategies for your business and life. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you want to stay exactly where you're at, I mean, right now you're running the perfect strategy to keep you exactly where you are. Like if you were coaching me and I said, I want to be struggling financially, dealing with overwhelm, all the things you just told me, you could coach me on exactly how to produce that because you're doing it now. Mm -hmm. But we're here talking about how you can change. So that's going to require strategy, a new way of thinking. If you want to change and have a better life and business, we have a training program, new strategies for that. But if you want to stay where you are, no training required, just keep doing what you're doing. And right now you always defer a decision. You always have a financial excuse. You're going right back to the same old pattern. And there are patterns that make people succeed. And there are patterns that make people stuck, cause people to fail and be frustrated. And I see those patterns in you right now. And I'd like to help you change them. If you'll let me, hmm. the fuck are you going to say that? The fuck are you, know? you know, if you ever work with somebody and they think you can really help them and you say something like that. So I've said shit. I've, I've, I've objection handled with people, people like a room for over two hours until I got the whole entire company to sign up for a Tony Robbins event. I have, I have well over 20,000 high ticket sales. And so I would, but I was committed and I had the certainty in the moment. And I knew just like Tony, like had this mindset, like I'm going to fucking make it happen and I'm going to go until. So I did do a lot of training around that, but I put myself in those uncomfortable situations and I trusted myself and I had faith and certainty, like I said. So, you know, the linguistics part counts, 
But you can't study like a bajillion things and there's so many possible situations that happen. You have to be able to create in the moment. And so to get to that place, there is a training of the linguistics, reframing patterns. There's a training of your own physiology to produce that state within yourself and to transfer it to another person, the certainty and clarity that they need to move forward. But you know, there's a lot that we can unpack there. And so it's, it's kind of like this interesting thing around you know, certainty or confidence. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I'm not, I'm not confident in making that money or doing that thing. And the reason they're not confident is because they're not competent. Mm. Like they don't know how. But mm -hmm. if I ask somebody like, are you confident you can tie your shoes? What'd you say? They say, yeah. I say, why? Because I've done it a million times. Okay. Nice. So do you need to do something a million times before you, feel, before you feel confident? For some people, yeah. I'm like, well, if that's true for you, you need to study a bunch of fucking things before you just take action. There's a lot of things you'll never do because you, like, you have to do it the first time. And so every single moment, we need to be training, but we also have faith in the unknown. So it's two sides of a coin, the competence and the confidence to even act when you don't have competence. Mm. And, that, and that creates more confidence. So it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a feedback loop. So good. And communication needs to be that way because you know, you don't know exactly what somebody's going to say. And so you're curious and it's exciting and it's an adventure to find out what's unique about this beautiful snowflake of a human being, what's their problems and to feedback and make them feel that you understand, but not like, oh, okay, I've heard this a bunch of times before. Here's what you need to do. They need to understand that you understand and they need to understand that you care about understanding them. So there's another layer to it that makes people feel something that puts you in a position of trusted advisor. So good. There's Dude. a lot of fact there. You know, that was like, we, we unpacked a lot in like these few minutes. Like there, there's a lot, there's a lot of juiciness there for people if they're into it. Um, we could talk about those things for literally years. Oh, so many gold nuggets from this. Um, I'm going to send this over to my sales team, have them go through it. I'm going to go through it again. Uh, I love it, dude. Um, but for the audience, we've got to hop off. Um, Eli and I are working on a game plan to scale his business to eight figures, far beyond, with big muscles, with team and systems. So we're going to hop off and jam out on that. Uh, if you want to join uh, Eli, uh, he's an active member in Seven Figure CEO and just drops gold nuggets in there. Um, and if you want to learn more about, about his programs, how should they how should they do that? You know, thanks to you, I have a Facebook group, Elite Level Influence, which stands for E-L-I, cheesiest name in town, Elite Level Influence. And then just my Facebook is my name, easy to find. I love it, dude. Awesome, guys. We'll put the Facebook group in the comments underneath here in the next 15 minutes or so. So you should get notified with that if you're not part of Eli's group yet. Um, and Eli, this was transformational for me. So I know it was transformational for, uh, everybody that was watching. Uh, thank you so much for being here, dude. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you.